Hello everyone. So last time we looked at what happened in the main screen. Now we're going to look at what happens during the gameplay. So today we're just going to cover all the actors and how we set them up. And in the final episode, we will basically check how we link all of it together with the game instance. So we will be looking at a few things. The first one we will look at is what happens when we pick up coins. As you can see, Several events happened and the coin has disappeared. We will look at how portals work. We will look at how damage is dealt. Now, keep in mind, we have an extensive video on how to make it more advanced than this. This is exceedingly basic, but basically touch and die. And finally, we have a heart actor here that you can pick up and it will restore your health. So first we'll take it from the top. So we'll start with the game mode, followed by the player controller, followed by the blueprint interface, then our first person character, then the coin, the damage, the heal and the portal. So to start off, let's go with the game mode. So the game mode is called at the beginning of every level. It is the first thing to appear and it's the first thing that can uh, start cascading downwards. So here we have an event begin play. And the first thing we're gonna do is cast to our basic game instance that we created and then set it up as our variable because we're gonna call it a few times. We're gonna remove the loading screen here called from the game instance we're going to create a widget score. We're going to add it to the viewport. We will cover this in the next episode. Then when the first person character is spawned, we will, we will cast to it and we will set its stats based on our save data. That is in the custom game instance. Next, we're going to do a branch and this is very important. When we load the level, we need to know have we come from a portal or have we appeared from a save game state? If it's from a portal, so the custom game instance will know if we came from a portal, the portal itself, as we'll see later, will will tell it so. If we've come from a portal, we're gonna look for all actors of class portal. And for each one of them, we're gonna be looking for something in the game instance that has the next uh, level entry point. If we find this, we will then set the player transform to that. So basically the game mode will uh, appear. The player will appear in the level at a specific coordinate and based on whether or not it was teleported in through a portal or through a save state, we're going to move the player to the new transform. So very important, we're going to set the player controller to that transform, not just a character. Since we've uh, teleported the player from a portal, we need to tell the game instance that, that it's done and we're going to clear some uh, variables in it. So it will no longer be is loaded from portal and the next level entry point will be set to null. If we did not load from a portal, it will spawn us from a saved player location. So it's going to look at the custom game instance. It's going to look in the save data and in it, we're going to get the save transform. From it, we're going to do a minor check. We're going to make sure that the location is not 000. This is by default our location in the world. So if it is not 000, Then we're going to set the player transform to the saved transform. If it is 000, then we're going to use something called a backup transform. And it's entirely based in the game instance. Uh, for the purpose of this, the location is minus this much, minus this much, and plus this much. This will be called the first time you load the game because you have neither a saved origin nor a portal origin, which makes sense. Next, we're going to look at the player controller. 
So the player controller does not have many functions. The first one we'll do is on begin play, we'll just set the input mode to game only. That's because when we go into the game through either portal or loading, we want to be able to shoot and get into the action. We don't want to have to click and initialize our cursor. The other one is the input action for the pause menu, which was set as either escape or uh, I believe Q in the project. Uh, this will toggle the pause menu as it is set into the game instance. Again, we will cover this in the future episode. Afterwards, we need to make a blueprint interface for our three different actors. One to take damage, one to heal health, although you could use them interchangeably, and one to collect coins. Again, for taking damage and healing health, we have another tutorial as linked here, where you can go and extensively see how you can do a really, really good job at taking damage and dealing with death. Again, for the purposes of this video, it's just a counter. You can add as many functions as you need here to do as many things as you want. Notice that the take damage and the heal health are static, so there's no inputs or outputs. However, for the collect coin, we have an input, which is the GUID. When we get to our first person character, the first thing we're going to do is go to the class settings, where we will add the blueprint interface we've created previously. Notice that you must compile and save your blueprint interface prior to being able to add it here. And once you've added it here, you need to compile again and save your first person character in order to have the BPI events appear. We then create the BPI events here, event take damage, event heal health, and event collect coin. The logic is as follows. When we take damage, we're gonna check a single condition, which is, are you at or less than zero? So when we take damage, our health is gonna go down by 10. If that value is lower or equal than zero, we're going to trigger the death event. And that is flagged into the game instance. If not, we'll just set the health to a new value. For the event heal health, it's the same thing, except that we also check if the upper limit is reached. Here, it's 100. So if you get above 100, we're just gonna set the health back to 100. And finally, a bit more complex, we're gonna do for the collect coin, we're gonna use the GUID input here. We're gonna add to our coin count. We're gonna set the new coin count. And then we're gonna add the GUID of the collected coin to the game instances save data. So in the game instance, we have a temporary save data that we can always transpose into the save game. So here we're just building up this GUID array. If we don't wanna save or if we just want to load something else, then the data will be lost and then you can basically reset it. Additionally, because we are directly reading from the player character, as it is the one that is interacting with the environment, we will be setting the character stats and getting the character stats using two functions. So to set character stats, we basically set them from the game instance. And when we take a portal, as we will see later, we will be getting the stats. To set the stats, we created a function. The input here is a character stat struct, the one we've created earlier. We're gonna break it and we're gonna get the health, the coin count and the character name. Now it might seem a bit overcomplicated and why am I setting it twice? Um, whereas you can always have it into the game instance at any point. Uh, the reason for this is that again, the logic here of the architecture is that the character is the one interacting with the environment. Therefore we're getting and setting it first. And if we need to save it, we're gonna give it to the game instance later. For get, it's exceedingly easy, get character stats, and the return node is, again, the character stats struct. However, in this case, we split the struct. Our next actor is going to be the damage actor. It has a default scene roots for easy placement, so it doesn't clip into the ground. A static mesh that is set with a rotating world position offset material. That is so we can use the GPU for rotation and not the CPU since we don't need to calculate the vertices movement. 
Uh, for more details on that, feel free to visit this video where we even benchmarked it. And finally, a sphere collision so that it knows when it's colliding. In the event graph, we have a simple event actor begin overlap. It will simply check, does it implement the interface we have created earlier? If so, we're going to call the take damage on that same actor and then destroy this actor. As you can see, there is no method of saving whether or not this actor was taken. So if we reload the level, it will respawn. For the health, it's similar to the damage. So we have our default scene root, a static mesh. Again, we're using the same world position offset as seen into this video and the sphere collider. In the event graph, we did the exact same thing as previously shown with the BP damage. Instead of calling the damage, we're going to heal health. That's it. Finally, we have our portal. So we used a default uh, particle effect. So we have the scene root so that the particle effect does not go into the ground and we have some way to select it. We have our collider. In the collider, we have our particle system. Uh, it's a summon portal from Infinity Blades. Very easy to get. And finally, we have an arrow. Now it's very important. So the logic here is that when you collide with the portal itself, you get teleported. But if you teleport the person to the exact same location, which is the portal, it will trigger the portal again. So you basically have this infinite loop of portaling. To avoid that, we're going to take the portal. And when we load into the next level, rather than get the portal, we're going to get the arrow set in front of it. Now, this arrow is only visible when you're playing around, but not visible in game. So you can easily set it on the map and see where you, you'll be facing when we get out of the portal. In the event graph, we have, again, begin overlap. Once we have the overlap, we're going to check if it implements the interface. And if it does, then we're going to call the task on the game instance. And in it, we're going to do the load level function, which we'll be seeing in the next video. For the next level uh, loading function, we need a next level's entry point and then the next level's name. These are all variables that have been made public. So each portal will have its own entry point number. Then when you go into a portal, it will look for which entry point to go to in that portal. And finally, each portal have its own level's name, which is whatever level it's in. This way, you can set in the same map multiple portals with each being different exit points and each being different entry points to different levels. So let's take a quick look at the toggle pause menu function inside of the uh, game instance blueprint. So the first thing it will do is check whether or not we have already toggled the menu. If we did, then this value is set. If not, it's null. Let's go with the not valid option, which means you didn't toggle it yet. So if you didn't toggle it, we're going to set the global time dilation to zero, meaning the game will freeze. If there's a particle or something in the air, it will just float. Next, we're going to disable input from our player character by the player controller. This is so that when you toggle inputs and whatever, your clicks, they're not going to be clicks on the player character. Or if you need to press keys, it's not going to be read into the player character. We're going to set to show the mouse cursor so you can click around. We're going to create the um, pause menu widget, add it to the viewport. If, however, we toggle the pause menu again and it is valid, meaning that we do have a pause menu, then we're going to just cancel out of it. So we're going to do the reverse from below. We're going to set the global time dilation back to one. We're going to enable our input. We're going to hide the mouse cursor. We're going to remove the pause menu from the parent. We're going to set it as null, very important. And finally, we'll set the input mode back to game only. The other function we'll be looking at is the one that portals use. So the first thing we're going to check is 
the save player state. So here, this is a function we've created so that we basically go into our character, the first person character, and we get the character stats in it that we've uh, previously set inside the level. So every time you take a portal, the player character will communicate its health and how many coins it has to the game instance. We then set that. So we use the get character stats uh, function we've created earlier in our first person character. And then we set uh, into our save data variable right here, the, uh, the variables in question. Once we save the player state, then we set our next level entry point right here. We create the loading screen to mask what's going on. And then we're going to set the is loaded from portal to true. And then we're going to open the next level. Now, remember that earlier when we created the, the uh, game mode, the first thing the game mode will check is have we loaded from a portal? If so, Let's check what the next level entry point is, and then we're gonna clean it up and clear it. All right, everyone, we're gonna wrap things up here. And in the next video, we'll go over the final blueprints required to make it into a fully functional game base. Thank you again for watching and consider hitting the like and subscribe button for notifications on future videos. Also consider checking out and supporting us through our Patreon. See you next time.